and hopefully that I'll be able to say some things that will be uh, encouraging to all about the value of prison ministry. Um, and it's good to uh, have my preacher here, <laughs> Brother Cleveland Allen, uh, minister of the East Side uh, Church of uh, Christ there in Tallahassee. And we're worshiping with he uh, and my, my daughter. And we, um, uh, the work there is going good. And y'all just keep praying for uh, him that he might uh, continually to do those things that God will have him uh, to do. And I'm thankful that my wife is with me uh, also because if she wasn't with me, I don't know what I'd do. Uh, simply because all of this fog and everything is here and, and uh, I don't see like I used to see. And uh, she has to do most of the driving at, at night and I can foot it during the daytime. And so it's just good that she's here and uh, say, I'm going to sit in the back and listen to you. I say, well, uh, that's a good thing. But I don't have, don't, don't have long and I'm just going to bring some practical things uh, today, but I really want to thank Brother Williams and, and the brethren uh, at the various congregations uh, here in uh, Bradenton and also um, uh, on the other side of the bay, and just uh, thankful for the work that they have done in bringing this uh, Florida State Lectureship together. But let us turn our Bibles uh, to Matthew, the 25th chapter. I know what, the, what it has in the book, but I'm going to go to Matthew, the 25th chapter, and this is the chapter that I was, the, the text that I was given um, when I talked with Brother Williams and I got here and looked in the book uh, and it talks about the uh, Paul and Silas being uh, in prison. And if you have it, say amen. All right. I'm going to start at uh, verse number 31. Uh, is it all right if I move around a little bit? Is that, uh, if I move around, I can't move around it. Okay, all right. All right, then we'll, we'll just stay behind uh, the podium. The Bible says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on, the, uh, on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those uh, on the right hand, Come, Ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, uh, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison. And you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see, the, see you hungry and fed you, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in, or naked, and clothed you? Uh, when did we see you sick and in prison and come, un come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, 
Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as ye did it uh, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. And I'm reading out of the New King James uh, uh, Bible. The value of prison ministry. And I guess we might be asking the question, is there any worth in it? In prison ministry. What do we think about prison ministry? Those of you that are in the audience that are involved in prison ministry, let me see, let me see your hand. That's involved, okay, I got you. That's involved in prison ministry. All right, all right. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's involved in prison ministry. You know, uh, prison ministry, uh, you don't have a lot of folk that get involved in it. And not because they might be scared of people behind bars, but because there's a lot of work in prison ministry. Amen. There's a lot of work in prison ministry. There are a lot of things, different things, that, we, that you can do to be involved in prison ministry. But, but when people hear about prison ministry, uh, they just think about going behind bars and, 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 and talking with people that uh, maybe don't want to do right and all of that kind of thing. And some of them doesn't. Some of them not going to change. Some will stay that way, but there are those that will change. And those that change, uh, they can become uh, good servants of the Lord. I've seen it. I've seen it work. When we were in Texas, we, uh, we uh, started working in the county jail ministry there. When we were there, and uh, there was a brother... Uh, last name, he was a Mike Fatten, and he was 80, when I got there, he was about 83 years old, and he had been working in the prison ministry, for, in the jail ministry, about 40 years, and if I got there, I was able to work with him about three years, and he passed away, but he did a great job, and before he passed away, we used to um, uh, carry information in, uh, to the uh, inmates there. And man, he'd have his, uh, uh, a satchel, and man, he'd walk a little bit, and he'd get tired, and he'd rest. Uh, but the guys were uh, waiting to see him because he was concerned. And because he loved what he was doing, uh, they were there. And, and uh, I had been in prison, in a prison and jail ministry, uh, since uh, 75, since 1975, and we have baptized a lot of people. We have baptized some that have become preachers and that are still faithful, you know, to the Lord. And we've, uh, we've baptized some that obeyed the gospel, but after they obeyed the gospel, because of their former life, you see, sometimes we think that that former life doesn't mean anything but that former life and those same guys were still out there and some of them were killed uh, uh, but they had obeyed truth and in obeying the truth we realized that it was able to uh, to uh, their souls was able to be uh, saved uh, although uh, they did not last long once they got out but um, when we think about well, uh, 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 raising the awareness of all of us to that kind of ministry, you know, we say we want better streets and we want uh, to be able to walk outside our homes and feel safe. Well, one way that you can help that is by uh, getting involved in the jails and in the in the prisons, and when you do that, you are helping people to overcome. And man, you're going to meet some you're going to meet some people in there that have done some terrible things. You know, that done some terrible things. I know. I remember one guy. Uh, he obeyed the gospel, but man, he had done some terrible things. 
He had killed about seven people. But when he obeyed the gospel, uh, you know, his life was changed. His life was changed, but he's probably still in prison. And uh, 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 he was at parchment, and they found some other people uh, that they thought he might have killed. And so he's probably still in prison at another prison uh, because of that. But he obeyed the gospel, and it changed his life changed his life, and in changing his life, uh, he was able to do some good things while he was in, uh, uh, while he's in prison, he's able to do some good things. But let me just talk about some things uh, uh, from the, that will help us, and one of, one of them is this, is that when you go into a jail, a county jail, or a prison, there are rules and regulations that you have to follow. You can't just come in there and do your own thing. But there are rules and regulations that you have to follow. And if you don't follow those rules and regulations, they'll put you out. You know, one of them uh, is that, you know, when you go in and you start teaching individuals, you can't go in there and start calling names. Yeah, you can't go out there and, you know, I know, I know you like to say, you know, if you're a Baptist, you, you know, uh, you're not going to be saved. And some of us uh, still, you, you're going to hell or, or whatever, the, you know. But when you're in a setting like that, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, uh, do that. Amen. You can ask this question. But you have to answer them in a way that's not going to cause problems. Cause problems with you and the, the sheriff. If you are uh, doing a, a county jail ministry, the, most of the time uh, the sheriff is over, is over that. And he, and he deals with, uh, with that. Uh, but when you're over out of prison, most of the wardens or uh, uh, whatever else they might want to call them, they're over, over that, and you have to follow their rules and regulations uh, if you're going to uh, be there uh, uh, very long. Now, what we used to do in getting guys' attention, and that's what you have to do, get their attention, and in, in most settings, especially in the county jail, where the money is shown and everything, uh, they don't give out calendars and things like that. And so when you, when you go in, if you have a calendar for somebody, you know, uh, they'll come up and get the calendar. But what we did was uh, we put all of the information of the courses that we offered, and we offered a lot of courses. And a man can start taking Bible correspondent courses uh, and if he's going to be in there three years or whatever it is, he can still be taking Bible correspondent courses uh, because they like to do that and they um, do those Bible correspondent courses. And when they uh, do that and get all these certificates, you know, some of it make, makes them feel big and, and also uh, in the eyes of the other uh, uh, inmates and the other inmates. And so we have that on the back of it, but we give them the calendar, and when they, and we tell them, turn it over to show you what we have to offer, and uh, you can take advantage of it. And uh, when you do that, then you have to have somebody to grade them. You have to have somebody to grade them, because you can't do it all by yourself. And so you have to have somebody to grade them, and so you can uh, use ladies, men, you can use... Uh, high schoolers or uh, whoever to grade uh, these uh, Bible correspondent courses and get it back to them because they don't want to be waiting uh, three or four weeks to, to get something back. You know, they want to, you know, get it back on a regular basis. And so um, uh, Bible correspondent courses are, uh, are good, but everybody, everybody is not uh, how I want to say this. Everybody can't do uh, prison 
jail ministry. Everybody can't go into the jails and the prison, but there, but you know, most people might be able to grade Bible correspondence courses, but they're not able to able to go in some. And so we realize that um, you might have people that you think that might be able to work it, and and as the minister and elder of somebody, you want to make them work it, but you can't make anybody do this type work because this type work here is. It can be difficult. And so you've got to let those people that want to, and then you've got to sit down and talk to them, get the rules and regulations, and, and talk them, to them about all of the rules and all the regulations. Some places you can't bring money in. You know, you can't bring, you know, you can't bring money in. And some places you can bring money in, but you can't bring over a certain amount of money in. And, and that kind of thing, and 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 uh, you can't give the inmate any uh, any money because he's not to have any 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 money because money is power for them. You see, money is power to them. They lend money and uh, uh, and do like the shops do, you know, and charge you interest and all of that kind of thing. And so you can't do that. Uh, because if you do that, then you, you get yourself in trouble. They throw you out, and, uh, uh, and you won't be able to go back in there. Uh, and so uh, everybody can't do it, but there are those that love to do it. And somebody that loves to do it, you help them the best that you can uh, in order that they might uh, be able to do what they need to do. And then, uh, in, in helping that inmate, and I want to get this in uh, uh, before my time's run, run out, you have a, a lot of things open up. You have their families. You have their, you know, their, their friends. And all of these avenues open up for people that you can talk to. Uh, people that you can talk to, but don't get involved in uh, uh, being a uh, uh, a person that uh, uh, want to help them so bad until you will be a, become an errand boy. You don't want to become an errand boy because if you do, you just be running errands. When you go and talk with the guy uh, in there. Uh, all ego, well, we, can you go by and tell my wife this? Uh, can you give this to my mom? Or, or whatever that, no, I can't give that to your mom. I can't, I can't you know, uh, go talk to your wife about this or that. Because once you become an errand boy, they're not going to respect you. And that's all they're going to use you for, the errand boy. But you are there to serve God and do those things that God will have you to do. And when you are there to do that and you do it, uh, then they'll respect you because they'll lose respect for you if, if, if they can control you and lead you in any direction that they want you to go. And so you have to be strong. You can't go in there as a weak person. They have to know that you're strong and they have to know that you know the book. They have to know that you know the book because if you don't know the book, see those guys, they're, they're studying, they're finding passages that uh, uh, they don't think you can answer. Uh, and all of that kind of thing, because they they there all day, you know, 24 hours a day for as long as, you know, they be there. And so you have to stay on top of it because you know when they come, you go in and they able to the the to pin you down, and you don't know the best thing you have to do then is just like when you're talking to people out here, but it's more so when they're locked up. You have to tell them, well, you know, I need to study that a little more. And uh, next time I come back to see you, you know, we'll have a talk about, we'll have a discussion on this and give you a little more time to study, me a little more time to study. But don't let them think that you know everything because we don't. You know, we don't know everything. And so there's no need of leading uh, them because some of these guys, you know, you think these guys in prison, uh, in jails, man, some of these guys have master's degrees. Uh, you know, I met some with doctorate degrees and uh, have more education than you, than you have. 
but you strive to be more educated in the book. Amen. And let them know that you understand uh, what you're talking about. And so, okay, all right. And so you have to be careful with that. And then sometime in prison ministries, um, uh, sometimes we want uh, people to write the, the inmates in prison. You know, want them to write them. But you have to be careful. I'm not saying don't write. But everybody can't write. Simply because they start asking you to do things and asking for things. They want your addresses and, and all of these kinds of things. One thing that you don't do, you don't give them your home address. What you do with them, and this is me, some, of, some people uh, might do that, but I tell people, don't give them, give them the church address. Uh, give them the address to the minister. If the minister have an address, give them that. But don't give them your home address. You don't want, you know, uh, uh, if they get out, they come to the church building. 